In this lecture, we are going to look at another script that will still use Epsilon Greedy, but you'll learn a few new things. In particular, you'll learn about what happens when we use different values of Epsilon. So you'll see how the outcome changes, and you'll be able to compare the results for different values of Epsilon. In addition, in this lecture, we'll work with a real valued reward. Our reward will be Gaussian distributed. That's equivalent to saying that the reward is a sample drawn from n mu sigma squared, where mu is the mean and sigma squared is the variance. Since the basic outline of this script is pretty much exactly the same as the previous scripts, I'm only going to go over the differences. Just to remind you, there are three main parts. First, we have the bandit arm class. Second, we have a function that runs an experiment over multiple trials. And third, we print and plot the results. So let's start with the bandit arm class. What's different about this? In fact, the only real difference here is the pull function, because the reward distribution has changed. As you can see, we are drawing a sample from a Gaussian distribution with mean m and a variance 1 rather than a Bernoulli. But importantly, you'll recall we discussed earlier that, in both cases, the way that you calculate the sample mean is exactly the same, so that's why the update function hasn't changed. Next we have the experiment function. In this function we take in a few arguments. First we have m1, m2, and m3. These represent the means of each bandit. Of course this implies that we're going to have three bandits. After this we do our epsilon greedy loop. You'll notice that it's exactly the same as before. No changes are required. At the end of this function, when we plot the results, you'll notice that I have this new line here, PLT x scale log. This makes it so that the plot shows up on a log scale rather than a linear scale. The reason for this is, these algorithms will converge quite fast, so it's difficult to truly see the differences between each value of epsilon. Using a log scale allows us to zoom in to the relevant parts of the plot. We also return the cumulative average reward from this function so that in the main section of this script, we can plot the cumulative averages for different values of epsilon in the same plot. In the main section, you can see the parameters of our experiment. The mean of each bandit will be 1.5, 2.5, and 3.5. The values of epsilon we'll try are 0 0.1, 0 0.05, and 0 0.01. Finally, we'll run each experiment for 100,000 trials. So let's run this and see what we get. So if we look at the cumulative reward plots, we can see that they all converge to the optimal bandit, around 3.5, minus any penalty for occasionally selecting the suboptimal bandit. So here's a different epsilon. We can see that we get a little closer. And here's another epsilon. So the real interesting plot is when you compare all three together. We can see that for epsilon equals 5% and 10%, they obtain a higher cumulative reward much more quickly than for epsilon equals 1%. Epsilon equals 1% still converges, but does so more slowly. On the other hand, if we look at the long-run cumulative reward, we can see that for higher values of epsilon, the cumulative reward is worse and worse. So there's a trade-off here. Do you want quick convergence, or do you want a higher eventual reward? On some applications, you might have to take into account the length of the experiment. So if you're doing a short experiment, maybe you can't afford to wait for the reward to converge, and therefore you would have to choose an epsilon that reflects your requirements.
All right, so if we look at the printout, here's what we see. First, we can see that in all cases, our estimate of the mean of each bandit gets pretty close to the true values, 1.5, 2.5, and 3.5. At the same time, we can see that the percentage of time that each algorithm spends selecting suboptimal bandits is very different for each value of epsilon. For epsilon equals 10%, we choose a suboptimal bandit over 6% of the time. For epsilon equals 5%, we choose a suboptimal bandit over 3% of the time. And for epsilon equals 1%, we choose a suboptimal bandit approximately 1% of the time.